In early January 1959, Fidel Castro came to power in an armed revolt that overthrew Cuban dictator Fulgencio Batista. From the first months since the Cuban Revolution, relations between Castro's government and the United States began to deteriorate. The new Cuban government confiscated private property, much of it owned by North American interests, sent agents to initiate revolutions in several Latin American countries, and established diplomatic and economic ties with leading socialist powers. The United States placed an embargo on Cuban exports and in January 1961 broke diplomatic ties with Cuba. The US allocated $13.1 million to the Central Intelligence Agency in March 1960 for use against Castro. Cuban exiles who had traveled to the US had formed the Contra-Revolutionary Military Unit Brigade 2506. The CIA funded the brigade, which also included some US military personnel, and trained the unit in Guatemala. With the aid of Cuban counter-revolutionaries, the CIA proceeded to organize an invasion operation. For this embarkment was chosen a small bay on the southern coast of Cuba, 150 kilometers southeast of Havana, known as La Bahia de Cochinos, the Bay of Pigs. The original invasion plan called for two airstrikes against Cuban air bases to destroy Cuban aircraft on the ground and to have air superiority during the invasion. Then, a 1,400-man invasion force would disembark under cover of darkness and launch a surprise attack. Paratroopers dropped in advance of the invasion would disrupt transportation and repel Cuban forces. Simultaneously, a smaller force would land on the east coast of Cuba to create confusion. The main force would advance across the island and set up a defensive position. The Cuban political leaders exiled to Miami were to be transported to the liberated areas to establish a provisional government. The success of the plan depended on the Cuban population joining the invaders. However, initially another landing location was proposed to the new American president John F. Kennedy, Trinidad, located about 270 kilometers southeast of Havana. Trinidad had good port facilities and it was closer to the Escambray Mountains, where several insurgent groups were already fighting against the Castro regime. That scheme was subsequently rejected by the State Department because the airfield there was not large enough for B-26 bombers. On the 4th of April 1961, President Kennedy approved the Bay of Pigs plan, also known as Operation Zapata, because it had a sufficiently long airfield, it was farther away from large groups of civilians than the Trinidad plan, and it was less noisy militarily which would make denial of direct US involvement more plausible. The landings were to take place at Playa Giron, codenamed Blue Beach, Playa Larga, codenamed Red Beach, and Caleta Buena Inlet, codenamed Green Beach. Several disadvantages of this location were not taken into account at that time. The Bay of Pigs was one of Fidel Castro's favorite fishing locations. He was familiar with the terrain and the peasants living around the bay were loyal to him. Additionally, the Escambray Mountains, the designated escape site, was 50 miles away through hostile territory. The bay was also far from large groups of civilians, a necessary commodity for instigating an uprising. Also, the bay was surrounded by the largest swamps in Cuba, making it physically impossible for any Cubans wanting to join the revolt to actually do so. Early on the morning of April 15th, phase 1 was deployed. At about 6 am Cuban local time, 8 bombers left Nicaragua to bomb Cuban airfields. The CIA had used obsolete World War II B-26 bombers and painted them to look like Cuban Air Force planes. The bombings had little success as Castro remained with enough aircraft available at his disposal on the day of the Bay of Pigs invasion. One of the bombers was specifically prepared to go directly to the United States where the pilot presented himself as a deserter from the Cuban Air Force 
informing that he and other Cuban pilots had been the authors of the attack on the airports and that they were part of a military group whose objective was to overthrow the government of Fidel Castro. This event was part of the strategy devised by the CIA to try to cover the involvement of the US government in the overthrow of the government of Cuba, alleging that there is a genuine uprising of Cuban military hostile to the Castro regime. Following Castro's orders, Raul Roa, the Cuban foreign minister, called an emergency session of the United Nations Political and Security Committee in New York on the afternoon of April 15th. As news broke of the attack, photos of the repainted US planes became public and revealed American support for the invasion. Late in the evening of April 16th, Kennedy made the decision to cancel the airstrikes set to destroy the remaining fleet of Cuban bombers. Meanwhile, the Brigade 2506 invasion fleet set sail from Puerto Cabezas in Nicaragua and at midnight on the 17th of April 1961 entered the Bay of Pigs. The ships were carrying about 1,400 Cuban exile ground troops of Brigade 2506 plus the Brigade's M41 tanks, weapons and supplies. The landing began at about 1 am. The unloading of troops was delayed because of engine failures and boats damaged by unseen coral reefs. A Cuban jeep carrying Cuban militia on patrol arrived on the beach and a firefight broke out sounding the alarm among the Cuban forces who in this way knew that the landing had begun. Castro was awakened at about 3.15 am to be informed of the landings which led him to prepare over 20,000 troops to repel the invasion and departed personally to lead his forces into battle. Castro's first priority was sinking the ships that invaded Cuban waters. At about 6.30 am, the Cuban fighter planes, which remained after the bombing of April 15th, began their attack on the American ships. The USS Houston, a supply vessel, was damaged by several rockets and its captain intentionally beached it on the western side of the bay to save it from sinking. Also, USS Rio Escondido, which was loaded with aviation fuel, was hit, causing a giant explosion before it sank. Before sunset, the remaining ships of Brigade 2506 withdrew, chased by the Cuban planes, leaving equipment and ammunition unloaded. By the end of the day, the brigade soldiers had established a beachhead, penetrating up to 10 kilometers into the mainland, taking the towns of San Blas and El Rincón. During the night, a tank battle broke out and the M41 tanks of the brigade soldiers clashed with the T-34 tanks of the Cuban army. The Cuban army opened fire with its new artillery guns, recently brought from the Soviet Union. In Playa Larga, the brigade troops faced with a lack of ammunition, decided to abandon their positions at 5 am and go to Playa Giron to join the other members of the brigade. At about 11 am, the Cuban army began an offensive to take San Blas, but the brigade soldiers managed to hold their positions. At 2 pm, President Kennedy received a telegram from Nikita Khrushchev telling him that the Russians would not allow the US to enter Cuba threatening them with a nuclear attack. That night, Kennedy had a meeting with American generals to discuss the situation in Cuba. They asked permission to use the US Air Force to support the invasion, but the president refused to send military support, citing the necessity of maintaining the minimum American involvement to prevent the discovery of the US sponsorship of the invasion. However, during the next day, 19th of April, Eight old B-26 bombers were sent to assist the brigade soldiers, but four were shot down and then the remaining four turned back. During the night, two ships arrived with supplies for the brigade soldiers, but they had to leave in the morning because of the danger posed by Cuban aircraft. At 10 am, the Cubans attacked San Blas with tanks and at 2 pm, the brigade soldiers started to retreat to Playa Giron. The Cuban army and militiamen started to advance rapidly, taking advantage of the fact that brigade soldiers remained without mortar and bazooka rounds. Towards the end of the day, the brigade soldiers tried to flee, some looking for boats 
others hiding in the jungles of the Zapata swamps, although most of the survivors had to surrender shortly before dark. In the days that followed, the US ships continued to search the coastline, reefs and islands for scattered brigade survivors, about 30 being rescued. The operation ended with a total defeat for the members of Brigade 2506. Some of the prisoners died or were executed, with the vast majority of them being sentenced for treason to 30 years in prison. Castro finally agreed to release the prisoners in exchange for $53 million worth of food and medicine. Between December 1962 and July 1965, the survivors were returned to the United States. The invasion was a US foreign policy failure that had a lasting impact on the Kennedy administration. The invasion's defeat solidified Castro's role as a national hero and widened the political division between the two formerly allied countries. It also pushed Cuba closer to the Soviet Union and strengthened the Soviet-Cuban relations which led to the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962.